Editing Assemblies. To edit assemblies, select the database uh, at the top here when you first log in or from any estimate that you're working in. Clicking on database takes us into the database editor. On the left hand side, we have items and assemblies along with a number of other selections here. I'm going to select assemblies. Typically what you would want to do is create a folder for your company. I'm going to right click on quantify assemblies and select add folder slash assembly. And I'm going to give it a name. Now this could be, you know, my assemblies or anything that uh, will work for you. So I'm going to call this my custom assemblies, or it might be your company name or anything of that nature. I'm going to make sure that this is set to folder and select save. This will create an empty folder where I can start to put my assemblies. Now what I'm going to do is I want to create a customized plug assembly in here. So I'm going to right click on this folder and I'm going to select add folder assembly again. And I'm going to call this subfolder devices and save that and that goes in as a subfolder. Now we do have a couple of options here for our plug. We can create something from scratch or alternatively we can use one of the pre-existing assemblies as a template. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to select electrical devices plugs. I'm going to select uh, for example here an MC plug and I'm going to right click on this assembly and select copy assembly. Then I can right click on my devices folder here and select paste assembly. And now that has made a copy of it and put it in my folder here. I'm going to collapse down these other folders and double click on my copy of this assembly. So this assembly is now locked to my company. Nobody else can see it. Any changes that I make are locked to my company. I can then click on this to edit its name. And I'm going to remove the copy on here. And I'm going to change it with something on the end here. That would be, you know, something key to my company. You might want to put your company name on the end. It will just make it easy to find your assemblies later on. Um, so I'm going to call this, you know, ABCD assemblies and change that. And then when I double click on that assembly again, it has updated the name for me up here. I can now go ahead and customize anything that I might want to in here. So for example, I might want to change out these plates. So I'm going to delete the existing one. And I'm going to come over here and I could drill down to, you know, everything that is in the database here, or I can do a search. So if I search for plate, it will pull up a ton of different things here, but I can scroll down and see what is in here. Um, so I'm going to look for uh, one of these plates here, double click on it. And then it's going to open up the properties of that item to add to my assembly. So the first one here is to select, you know, how many gangs this plate is. In this case, I'm going to just select one. And then I'm going to put in a formula here. And that formula is going to be equal, open square bracket, quantity. If you hover over this question mark here, it will give you the available variables in this assembly. The key variable is quantity. That variable is incorporated into every assembly by default. <clears throat> I could put one in here, for example, if I wanted to fix this at one. However, when you are counting something that is a count based, unit based, sort of like plugs, lights, those sort of things, putting one in means that you will only get one of these items no matter how many you count. What we actually want is one per count of this item, so we use the equals quantity variable. 
Where you would go with a single number is if you were doing, for example, length-based assemblies. So if you were doing a conduit run and you needed exactly two connectors, regardless of how long that run was, you would just put a fixed number of two in there. So I'm going to click Add here. And now that has gone into my assembly here. I could change out any other items. I can adjust the formulas on here. If, for example, instead of having a two-hole strap uh, in here, I could edit this. And instead of putting a fixed number of four per count of this, I could put five or eight or adjust this however I would want to for my assembly. And then select the size, of course. And now that has updated my assembly's formula. I can now go and use this assembly in an estimate. So if I open up an estimate here, I have a drawing selected already. And when I click on assemblies here, I will see my folder here for my custom assemblies. And when I expand this out, I will find my assembly in here. Now, if you already had an estimate open, you would not necessarily see the latest list in here. For example, if I go back to assemblies and I just create something quickly here. So I'm going to add a quick test assembly and I'm going to set this one to assembly and hit save. So I have test in here right now. But when I come back here, even when I close and reopen this, I do not see that test in here. To refresh this list, simply click on the search icon here. And that will refresh your assemblies list. It's the same in the items database also. And now I will see my assemblies here. When I double click on this assembly, I am given the questions, you know, the standard questions that were part of that assembly. And I can go and start to count this. And when I click commit, it goes into my estimate and I can expand this down and see what has come in. And I will see here I've got my new different style of plastic plate in this assembly. Going back to the assembly editor, when you're copying and pasting an assembly in, it can sometimes be beneficial to remap any of the variables that are in here. So for example, I can select that wire and I can select gauge and uh, change the count if I want to, or just fix it to two in this case and hit confirm. And that will simply update the assembly so that the variables are properly filtered down when I go back to my estimate here, double click on this, and you'll see that this list is shorter and exactly filtered down. One of the other things that we have in here for working with assemblies is the assembly debugger. So in the top right here, uh, you'll see this little wrench icon. This allows you to test your assemblies outside of an estimate. So I can simply click on this, select whether I want to run this in Imperial or metric. So this would simulate how I'm running my estimate. And then I can click next. And it's going to ask me the same questions that it would ask me within an estimate. So again, I can select my you know number 12. I can put a drop length allowance in here and I can pretend that I'm entering in 10 of these. And then when I click commit, it's going to give me a report on exactly what the system has seen for each one of my formulas, what the values are that it is populating into those formulas for me, what the formulas were that I entered in, and the total quantities that the system will calculate out. So if I had done this in an estimate, these are the values for each one of these items that I would get carried in my estimate. So a handy tool when you're debugging complicated formulas and you want to see basically what the system sees when it's evaluating out your assembly. Along the top here, we also have our tools. Uh, so these are the default tools that you want to assign to the assembly. So I could make this a circle, I could make this a rectangle, simply by clicking on this. You can also set a color for this assembly in here. Now all of this can be overridden when you put this assembly on a quick item pad. 
Quick item pads overrule anything that is in here as a default. However, it can be nice to simply put those defaults in while you're working on them. And then when you put it into a quick item pad, it will come in with all of those defaults for you. The other key thing here is the assembly unit. So since we copied and pasted this assembly, uh, it is going to pre-populate this with whatever the original assembly had in it. But when I click on this, there are a number of different ways that you can measure out an assembly. So length-based assemblies would be for things like conduit, wire, anything length-based. Each is for unit counts. And then you have a few other options in here. If you select meter, for example, the system will automatically uh, recalculate the quantities to meters when you're in an imperial and vice versa. Um, most commonly though, selecting foot will be the best way to go. And then the system can uh, change that appropriately if you're running in a metric estimate. To create a assembly right from scratch. So I created this test assembly. I'm gonna delete that. One thing to note is once an assembly is used in an estimate, it cannot be deleted. So for example, I cannot delete this assembly here. It will give me an error notifying me that this was used in an estimate. If I go and delete all instances of that assembly, I can then delete it in here from my tree. A common workaround for this is to simply create a folder called deleted or superseded and anything that you want to basically uh, forget about delete from your uh, items there you can simply drag into that folder sort of like a recycling bin I'm going to right click on here on my devices and I'm going to create a new from scratch assembly so to do that I'm going to click on add folder or assembly here and then I'm going to give it a name so this is going to be my duplex plug we'll call it a 20 amp EMT for example and I'm going to make sure that this is set to assembly and I only need this to be per each because it is not length based and when I click save it goes into my tree here now when I click on it this is what I see as a totally empty assembly in here the first thing that I might want to take a look at is what do I want the user to be asked when they're taking this off? And this is where variables come in. So if I go and try to use this assembly right now, so if I go back to my test estimate here, cancel that, refresh my assembly tree here, I see my duplex plug. When I double click on it, the only thing it's going to worry about here is quantity. I could go and start to count this now and it would add up my quantity, but this is a totally empty assembly. So there's really no point in doing that. For my plug, however, what I may want to ask is what is the gauge size of the wire we're going to run to this? So to do that, we add a variable here and I am going to call this gauge. And then I'm going to select a type. In this case, it will be an attribute. And then I'm going to select wire gauge as the subtype. Attributes are the only items in here that have subtypes. If you're using something, for example, a decimal or text or anything of that nature, do not select a subtype in here. Just leave it at select subtype. If you are using an attribute though, make sure to select a correct subtype for it. So I'm going to select wire gauge here and I'm going to click add. And now it goes into my list for gauge here. The next thing that I might wanna do is number of wires run to this plug. So for that, I can put number of wires. And I have a couple of options here for this. I could select decimal or I could select an attribute here again with a subtype of count. And I'm going to add that in. Now you'll notice here that it is above gauge. So if I go and use this assembly again, 
and I click on assemblies here, double click on my assembly, I'm going to see here now that number of wires is the first option here and that doesn't really flow well for what I want my user to be entering. I would like them to start with gauge and then work through to number of conductors, etc. So to change that order, you can simply go back to your assembly, select the variable you want to move and drag it up. And when I drop it down here, it is now above wires. So if I go back and test this assembly again, I will see that gauge is being asked for first and then number of wires. I will also see in here every available option for gauge or wire size. And the reason for that is these variables are not yet assigned to any items. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is add some wire in. So I'm gonna select electrical here and I'm going to select my cables and wire and I might want to run this in, again, we can run this in MC. And I'm going to select one of my MC cable options here. And then what I can do here is I could either select this to always be run in a specific size, but again, I want the user to be able to enter that information. So I am going to pin the gauge variable of the wire to the gauge variable of my assembly and the number of C here for number of conductors is going to be pinned to number of wires. Usually you would want to keep the variable names the same just for consistency, but this shows you that you don't necessarily have to do that. And then what I'm going to do here is put in equals quantity for my formula. And now I have some options here. I could put a variable in for drop length or any of that nature, or I could simply put times 10 if I always wanted 10 feet of drop length here. And then I can click add. And what this is going to do for me now is put this cable in here. Now, if I go back to test this assembly again, what I will find in here, double clicking on this, is this list of available options will be significantly reduced. Um, it's reduced down to what is available in the items that I've put in here. So that was if I was going to use uh, an MC cable here, but since I'm running everything in EMT, what I actually want to bring in is THHN. So I'm going to bring in some THHN here. Same sort of thing. I want it to be pinned to the variable gauge here. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to bring in a formula here for quantity. Again, if you hover over this question mark, it will tell you the available uh, options for this assembly that I've put in so far. But since THHN is individual conductors, I want it to go quantity times 10 to you know always bring in 10 feet but times the number of wires that I want this to carry. So in this case, I'm going to put open bracket, number sign, <coughs> wires, closed bracket, and select add. And now this has been changed out for THHN. So if I were to go back and test this now, and I am hopping into an estimate here to test this, but I could use the assembly debugger itself. I now have the options that are available in my THHN, and then I can select any number of wires to go in there, and that will be then brought in. You can use Boolean logic in here. You can use uh, any number of common formulas that you would find in Excel or similar when creating your items. If I wanted to then bring in conduit for this. So what I would then want to typically do is add another variable here and call it conduit size. Again, it's going to be an attribute. And in this case, it's going to be a dimension. And I'm going to select add there. And I could leave conduit size up at the top my personal preference is to bring it down to the bottom to be one of the last things asked 
because the conduit size is largely going to be related to the number of wires that I'm putting in here. Then I can select conduit here. I'm going to use EMT. I'm going to use bare galvanized. And I want to bring in the conduit size variable here to attach to it. And I'm going to bring in quantity times 10 and add that in. Now, what I did not allow for in here is any sort of cut length on my wire. So I can go back and change that formula and I could put a times 1.05 to add a 5% waste factor on that. Again, it's entirely up to how you would do your installations with this. Now what I can do here is bring in a couple of connectors. So I'm going to want my set screw connectors in here and just a standard one. And I want that to also be selected by conduit size. So it matches what my conduit is. And this is going to be equal quantity times two and add this in. And what we've created here is a very simple assembly right from scratch. And again, to test it out, I could either use a test estimate or simply come in here and select the assembly debugger and fill in the same information here. Selecting number 12, I'm gonna throw three wires in here. I'm gonna put this in a three quarter inch conduit and I'm going to again say I want 10 of these. Clicking on commit, it's going to show me that I'm going to get 315 feet of wire here 100 feet of conduit and 20 connectors here. So that is what would be evaluated in my estimate. Going to the estimate, what I'm going to do here is cancel that and click on this again. And same sort of thing, I'm going to select number 12 with three wires here, for example, three quarter, and I'm going to count off for example, just 10 plugs here. And hit commit. And this has gone into my estimate successfully now. And when I drop down this assembly here, maximize my audit trail, I can see exactly what it's brought in and it matches what the assembly debugger indicated would come in here. So that is a couple of different ways of creating and editing assemblies.